So if only registered vehicles require licenses and insurance, does that mean unregistered vehicles are not bound by the statutes and acts that govern these things? When pressed with these questions desiring clarification, the government often responds with form letters, non-answers, and sometimes even hostility. One thing they do not respond with is a clear answer. Business as usual, some might say. But it seems they are not happy with just the registration of our material property. It appears they own our bodies as well. In the early 1900s, Colonel Edward Mandel House had this to say in a private meeting with President Woodrow Wilson. Soon every American will be required to register their biological property in a national system designed to keep track of the people and that will operate under the ancient system of pledging. By such methodology, we can compel people to submit to our agenda, which will affect our security as a chargeback for our fiat paper currency. Every American will be forced to register or suffer being unable to work and earn a living. They will be our chattel and we will hold their security interest over them forever by operation of the law merchant under the scheme of secured transactions. Americans, by unknowingly or unwittingly delivering the bill of ladings to us, will be rendered bankrupt and insolvent, forever to remain economic slaves through taxation secured by their own pledges. They will be stripped of their rights and given a commercial value designed to make us a profit, and they will be none the wiser. For not one man in a million could ever figure out our plans, and if by accident one or two should figure it out, we have in our arsenal plausible deniability. After all, this is the only logical way to fund government, by floating liens and debt to the registrants in the form of benefits and privileges. This will inevitably reap to us huge profits beyond our wildest expectations and leave every American a contributor to this fraud which we will call social insurance. Without realizing it, every American will insure us for any loss we may incur and in this manner, every American will unknowingly be our servant, however begrudgingly. The people will become helpless and without any hope for their redemption and we will employ the high office of the president of our dummy corporation to foment this plot against America. Huh? What this means in as plain English as we can describe is that American citizens, along with Canadians, Britons, French, and every other country that has a central banking system and social network, these people are registered at chattel property. Chattel property is property held as collateral for something. In this case, the registered citizens are being held as chattel property to float bonds for government loans that add to the national debt. Our income tax is the only method by which the national debt is repaid, and our apparent obligation to pay this particular tax comes from being born into this debtor-creditor position. How can this be done to us if we are humans with unalienable rights? Simple. No one has ever made you do anything. We do it to ourselves. Now wait a second. What I mean is that every time we consent to submitting an application for registration, we are giving up a huge amount of rights in return for supposed benefits. Now upon further research, you'll find that the concept of the corporate person has been reversed and we are now being treated as the corporations, as non-living persons with no emotions, no rights, and no humanity. No longer are we actually the persons. The concept of natural and artificial person is connected now through a joinder when we interact with any agency residing in the Admiralty Marine Law jurisdiction. How it works is like this. You're considered Admiralty Law chattel product which is delivered by a doctor who issues a certificate of live birth for the product. Because from the banker's point of view, each birth, each product, has a dollar value. Your parents are told that it is the law to register your birth with the government. When they do this, they are abandoning their baby under admiralty law 
whereby the government then picks you up as a maritime salvage and creates a company, a straw man corporation, or a fictional entity that has the exact same name as the baby, only spelled in all capital letters. This company is your artificial person. When you interact with police, government, and agencies, by using the name of your company, thinking you're using your own given name, you unknowingly give up your human rights by creating a joinder between yourself and the corporation. You are volunteering to say, I am not acting as a human, I am acting as a corporation. You aren't a person. Later on in life, when you apply with any corporation, including the government, to get a license, file taxes, get a mortgage, open an account, or even vote. It is not you, the human being, who is being given these things, or the human plugging into these things. But in fact, it's your corporate straw man acting on your behalf. New entities are being created with different titles depending on the version of the corporate straw man that's being used. For instance, your person that is licensed to drive, as defined by the legal system, is a driver. Someone who creates a bank account has created a company called a customer. A voter who registers to vote in any election has created a company called a voter. And anyone who applies for social security or social insurance or ever files a tax return has created a corporate entity with the same name as him or herself, only in all capital letters, and this corporate person is called a taxpayer. As Edward Mandel House said, the elites would make it hard if not impossible to work legally and thus earn a living unless people registered their biological property and submitted to the social insurance scheme. The number given to citizens as a social insurance number or a social security number is used to track where you work, how much you earn, and how many benefits you've earned. How sad that we would give up so many freedoms in return for a few paltry benefits. Of course, the system was not designed to last or to support ever-growing numbers of people who would need support. Ask anyone on a pension if it's what they've expected. Or sincerely question whether your retirement savings are actually going to be there when you retire. At any time, the banks can just close you off from your money. And since they own the Senate, the House, the judges, the lawyers, and the policymakers, good luck with your recourse. At the same time, Many of the most wealthy and well-known corporate brand companies set up shell and holding companies in countries with tax shelters and hold billions in assets, avoiding the legal corporate income tax in a maze of hierarchical company ownerships and stock percentage manipulations. Some Wisen citizens even change their residency to other low-tax countries and then just live as a human in the United States or Canada, making millions, if not billions, of dollars of low-tax or tax-free money running their business through this country. The argument for abolishing the income tax makes sense when you consider the following. The income tax provides for not one service in government. Not one wage, school, road, hospital, salary, or program is paid for by the income tax. The roads are paid for by gas taxes. Education is paid for by property taxes. The military is paid for by legal corporate income tax. Hospitals and healthcare are paid for by lotteries and excise taxes on alcohol and cigarettes. City infrastructure is paid for by violation tickets, fines, and fees. The goods and service tax, along with provincial and state taxes, pay for the majority of other services we enjoy. And so they should, as they are mandatory taxes applied to almost everything we buy. Income tax, however, applies only to paying the interest on the national debt, nothing else. The debt never goes down, and some people wonder why the income tax feels like perpetual slavery? It literally is. Think about it. Money not paid to the government as income tax, where it subsequently goes to private bankers as profit, will inevitably be spent on some sort of good or service that will still be taxed. So it's not as if removing income tax allowing us all to earn and keep more money, and abolishing the national debt would wreck our nations. 
if anything, they can become prosperous once more. However, if we like the concept of half the wealth being owned by less than 1% of the population, I guess we'll just have to keep things the way they are. Thankfully, there are groups who are not only trying to educate people of these legal shenanigans, but are actively in court themselves, advocating, defending, and letter writing. Around the world today, many activist groups have been popping up. A lot of these have been focusing specifically on the freedom movement, such as Canada's Think Free organization, and also the Elizabeth Ann Elaine Society, who are advocating going back to sovereignty status, firing the government, and becoming what is recognized as a free man on the land, a designation whereby an individual is recognized no longer as a person in law or a natural person, but a free human living on land, not bound by any act or statute, nor any governing body or corporate entity. Robert Arthur Menard explains how he went through the process. In my research, I found that people used to use notices of understanding and intent and claims of right all the time. If there was a conflict, if they wanted to avoid conflict or ensure that if there was a conflict, they came out on top. They would serve what was called the notice of understanding and intent and then the claim of right. Uh, you do that now with the government. You create a, a document that expresses your understanding, expresses your intent, what your actions are and then you claim the right to do that, you go through the notarial process and you serve notice to them and you give them a chance to dispute. If they don't dispute, then the notary crafts a document saying they were served, they had a chance to dispute, they didn't, he wins. So it's a very simple process. It's as easy as saying to the host of a house, hey buddy, uh, it's time for me to leave, I'm leaving, have a good day. Now, Though there are no silver bullets to defeating an entity as large as the governing corporate system, knowing your human rights and being aware of the mechanisms through which others try and control you can help prevent your consent from being obtained due to ignorance. It's a good idea to always question when somebody wants you to sign something. You never know when it may come back to bite you in the ass. Using money and commerce law as a one-two punch against the vast majority of us who lack understanding due to our ignorance, is a practice that has existed for centuries. As our collective human capacity for intelligence and understanding increases, so too does the complexity of both the monetary system and the legal system. It is now at the point where, inside a court, the judge will claim the power to render irrelevant any and all arguments put forth by any person choosing to appear in court. We are operating under a de facto system. However, there are those who are taking the time to do their homework and research how to speak back in this foreign legalese language. The results have been mixed, but incredibly interesting to say the least. The important thing to remember is that these are supposed to be our servants and they have just tricked us into thinking we work for them. We must remember who we are and who we are not whenever we interact with any facet of the system because if enough of us collectively remember and educate, then the system changes with that expansion of awareness. We the people have the power to affect mass positive change, but we must communicate and take the time to understand and become aware of what is really going on around us. We have been conditioned to fear going to court fear encounters with any officer or any agency of the government, to fear what this person might do or fear what the planet might do. We even fear letters that we receive in the mail. We cannot live this way anymore because we are being bullied into a permanent control system. It appears that law is one area where these controlling elites are especially vulnerable to an educated public. It could be the avenue where we the people truly regain our human rights and freedoms. The events going on in the world today, believe it or not, are directly connected to the subjects we have covered so far in this film. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, 
Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subjected to the lights of publicity during those years. But the world is now more sophisticated and prepared to march toward a world government. The supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in the past centuries.